So uh, <coughs> this is the border up into New South Wales and uh, it's about as far as we can go. <laughs> well, we'll go up there and we'll have a look. Yeah, we'll go up to the actual border. This area is all recovered amazingly well. It's all been burnt. What do you reckon? About six months ago. Yeah, Chris, well, just before it was Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah, before Christmas. Before Christmas, yeah. So it's all come back remarkably it's well. It's a fucking now. So we uh, leave the uh, sign and ride up towards the actual border itself. Um, and it's just a nice mix of gravel roads, a little bit of uh, uh, a winding climb up. It's nice to uh, get up in the hills. Now this is not our main border crossing. This is a uh, very much a uh, country back road crossing. Um, and it's up in the national park area um, where uh, we're out you know, Queensland border and New South Wales border um, come together. So um, we sort of figured there wouldn't be much traffic on this road and uh, just blipped up to see what the actual border itself looked like. So, uh, yep. So this is the actual border. Uh, marker there. So uh, I'm guessing uh, New South Wales, this side of the fence, which is, I guess this is the rabbit fence, and uh, the border itself is locked and gated and cameras both ways to uh, make sure no one's going through. So that farm's on Queensland and all of that I think is National Park actually. But um, so in Queensland it's sixty-three thousand dollar fine for having a rabbit. And on this side of the fence you can grow them and eat them. I think it's cheaper than the rabbit fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a Six, 62 or something. I'll have to have a look. Yeah. It's cheaper to have rabbits and it's cheaper to get coronavirus. Yeah. So um, these cameras are here all the time and they're actually here for um, livestock. So um, horses and cattle have to be treated before they cross the borders between the two states and they've got treatment centers and stuff. Um, so the rabbit board owns that one. So that must be for the uh, guys who maintain the fence when they come through. Or, or it could just be that access to this road. You're not allowed to ride the, the fences, technically. Yeah, it'd be a long ride. So. I'm having to turn the traction control up to uh, five and six now just to survive today's ride. She's uh, pretty much toast for some strange reason. The back wheel keeps spinning. So. Yeah, so it's a uh, $66,000 fine for uh, crossing the border up here and um, it's pretty well protected border crossing so uh, I won't bore you with all of the uh, ride back down and around and uh, you know it's nice that within 50 k's of home we've got these roads that we can go for a ride on and have, have an explore they don't go particularly far although on that border crossing you actually uh, can cross over and uh, you come out down Urbanville kind of way and uh, and you can cross through over there and we come up towards uh, and come back towards the um, Maroon Dam which is a uh, recreational area um, 
like I said, not too many vehicles on the road. But there's the odd one. Um, just blipping along, keeping it um, relatively sane. Nice little tracks that we've been on before. We know them reasonably well. They're a mix of tar seal, country roads, and um, and gravel roads. So uh, we're taking it pretty easy. Uh, this is the first weekend after um, Corona lockdown phase three that we're allowed to go for a ride in uh, groups of however many are in your family plus uh, one or two individuals. Um, so Neil and I being from two different residences can only ride together. So there's a maximum of, of two. Um, no, no, maybe you can have three. But um, yeah, we're just taking it pretty easy and uh, glad to be out and allowed to go for a ride. Usually full of campers. Yeah, it's usually all fucking mud down there, isn't it? Not grass. Yeah. Oh, a couple of weeks, they'll be opening all this shit back up. Yeah. Well, no, at least another, maybe sometime in the next month we'll be back to fucking... I see Western Australia is just allowed uh, groups of 10 and fucking camping and all that shit. Yeah. Northern Territory. And I fell off my 640 over there. I went to ride down that bank to get a picture by the water. And it was just big rocks. <laughs> yeah. well, um, I'll, we'll go up this other road. It's a dead end, but it's a pretty cool little road. Yep. And there's some uh, little creek in that up there. I might see if I can put the drone up, maybe. Yeah, sounds good. So I've sped this up, not to uh, bore you, but um, yeah, just to give you an idea of what we ride around um, here in uh, in Queensland um, you know it's it's interesting easy riding uh, we actually did go up one uh, side track which is uh, Waterfall Creek Road um, but on the tricky bits uh, where it's quite rutted and quite steep and uh, quite a challenge on the uh, on the uh, GSA especially I didn't actually uh, record those because on the steep bits, it, it looks like it's flat. I mean, you really just can't tell how steep the whole area is that you're riding up when everything is uh, is steep. And I had my hands full and uh, I was just riding along behind Neil, making sure uh, he got up all the sections and uh, and uh, put it up behind him. Uh, it'd be easy if you had a, a smaller bike with uh, good tyres. Uh, but both of us have got the tyres that are left on from our um, Christmas uh, ride where we went down to um, uh, northern New South Wales, uh, sorry, uh, Bathurst and, um, you know, um, through that area, through when the um, bushfires were on. Um, so neither of us have got very good um, traction at the rear at the moment. I've got to say the 790 is just hilarious in that situation. I'm... Um, you know, playing with the uh, traction control in rally mode, turning it up, making sure that the uh, back tyre survives this ride. I'll, I'll get a new one next week. But um, I also had very little confidence in the front tyre. I tried the Michelin Star Cross 5 and uh, really did not enjoy it. It, it is uh, probably going to go down as my least, least favourite tyre that I've, um, I've put on an adventure bike. Um, just didn't seem to have the grip where I wanted it and um, moved around quite a bit, made the front feel unsettled on the road. Um, but uh, this is as far as we can go on uh, on this particular road. It, 
it just ends in a uh, uh, camping ground actually where I think they have scout camps and that kind of thing um, called the Gable so uh, we just rode up there to have a look and uh, we knew we weren't going to be able to get through this one but there's lots of this kind of track around that you can just explore and um, you know that's part of adventure riding is getting out and exploring so um, we did that and then uh, blasted back on a mixture of dirt roads country roads back roads uh, we didn't backtrack too much of the road that we had uh, gone on on the way out there um, as much as we could but uh, a couple of little little sections of it were the same uh, you know with the uh, uh, COVID lockdown like we've got you know the um, onus is on you to make sure that you don't do anything that is going to tax the uh, accident and emergency department as well they're, they're trying to keep as many people out of the hospital normal system as they can so I had had uh, <clears throat> full armor, full knee braces, uh, motocross boots, you know, the cities, and um, full protective gear on. Um, Neil was the same, you know, back protector and everything, just making sure that uh, we kept everything, uh, you know, well within our limits. Um, on the 790, it's always tempting to. Uh, slide it and do wheel stands and and stuff they're uh, they're a good fun bike when you uh, give them a rev and get them going but uh you know this weekend is sort of a trial for us dropping down one uh, restriction level so uh, i didn't want to become one of the statistics of uh, reasons why they wouldn't let us out so I kept it pretty sane but uh, i gotta say the 790 is just so much fun that way you can um i, I usually ride around in rally mode uh, traction level three and um, I have the throttle setting and street throttle setting um, you can probably see down on my dash the little ABS light is blipping anytime you're riding anywhere where there's gravel you um, just put it in off-road which leaves a little bit of your ABS going for your um, front ABS but your back you can lock up at any point um, if you do get caught on a uh, gravel section in the uh, you know in the road uh, mode, you can quite easily um, make the ABS work in your in your favour on gravel by being hyper aggressive with your front brake. Um, then it will allow your back brake to work a little bit more. But if you just cruise in on gravel with your ABS in road mode and you um, use more back brake than, than you use front brake, it will just disconnect, basically, and uh, <laughs> you're just along for the ride. Um, your, your back brake will be chattering away and you'll almost feel like you're accelerating. Uh, it's not great. So you can see here we've gone up um, some little side tracks. These are no through roads that we know. There's, um, you know, only so far you can go, but, uh, it'll, you know, it's all worth ex going up and exploring and having a look and, and um, you never know what you're going to come across. Sometimes there's not nice creek areas and other bits and pieces. So uh, we we'll are always go and have an explore if we haven't got a uh, an idea on, on where the road goes and um, then you know for next time this stuff's all pretty close to home it's not the stuff that we ride when we do a uh, an outback adventure ride that this is still in the um, eastern coast uh, you know region um, not far from home obviously and uh, you know these are roads that we ride just when you've only got a uh, three or four hour window where you can get out for an adventure ride some weekends and um, we know some of the roads pretty well and some of the roads we go up and explore and um, have a look up but that's all part of adventure riding so um, then I uh, just fast forward the last bit for uh, for getting home just to show you a little bit of the variety of countryside that we ride through and uh, give you an idea of how lucky we are to uh, even have these I mean personally I would 
rather have uh, some nice single track kind of trails that go places but you know uh, this part of the country is all pretty well developed and uh, it's all farm so uh, there's not a lot of that kind of trail around or if there is I certainly don't know about it Um, but you only got to go another hour or two further west and there are quite a lot of uh, roads that are are not this kind of three-lane country road but they're more two-lane um, trails and, and um, tracks and, and um, even some single track stuff that joins some of that up. So um, it's actually quite green through here for, uh, for this time of year. We had our rain kind of late and um, coming after the drought, you know, the ground just soaked it all up. So um, uh, it's not as brown as, as it will be in another couple of months. We actually have our dry season in the, uh, in the winter here in our wet season in the summer which is uh, nicer because when it's wet usually it's warm Um, not as warm as Asia or anything but um, yeah so uh, I guess that leads on to uh, future videos so I've got one coming up which is a little bit of a a, uh, COVID-19 isolation special and um, I'm on five acres myself which has got about uh, three and a half acres in one paddock with a a dam in it and um and another acre and a half which is um on the house side of the fence so uh i dragged the uh the ktm fleet out and uh me and my son are trying to figure out (laughs) how we can have a race uh without uh you know making it too unfair so uh we've divided it up between the 790 uh, and the um, 350 SXF and Brock's on the um, 640 and the 250 free ride. Um, so he's got the faster adventure bike and the uh, slower trail bike and I've got the um, slower on this track. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's all first and second gear. So uh, at some stage we'll uh, have a cool enough day uh, where the dust is down that we can do that and that'll probably be the next video so thanks a lot for watching and if you haven't already please subscribe and uh, click the alert bell and uh, thanks for uh, watching cheers